morning, everyone. Grade 12s and... And Bianca, your school. sound is not on? It is on, on my side. I'll share my screen, but everything is on, on my side. Hello? Okay, we've got sound now, it's perfect. Yeah. Thanks, Tarim. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, today, we are gonna be focusing on our question ones. So I just wanna bring your attention to these notes. Everybody should have these notes, so just grab them quickly, these winter school notes. Okay, um, and we're gonna be basically working through all the algebra for um, your paper ones. Okay, so we're not gonna be able to get through all of it, but we're gonna get through as much as possible. But this lesson is gonna be very practical. So I'm gonna explain a little bit, give you some basics, and then I'm gonna ask you to work a little bit. I'm gonna put a little timer up so you guys can actually just check your time. We're gonna work through that. I'm gonna explain it, consolidate, and then there will be, we'll do it again and again. Because repetition, obviously, you start to recognize the questions. You start to see, okay, cool, there's a pattern. They always ask a simple question 1.1.1, the first one, or well, this is 2.1.1, but it's still actually question one. The first question will always be a straightforward quadratic. The second one will generally be one where you have to use the quadratic formula, and then you'll have an inequality and you'll have a cert, although this one hasn't printed properly on here, but I'll fix it, so it's fine. Okay, and you can see this question one, the same thing. We have a normal one, we have a quadratic formula one, we have an inequality. So the first three questions, you know what to expect. This is 2020, here's 2022. If you look down to 2021, you can see it again. Normal. Sorry, Bianca, can you share yeah. your screen for us, please? Thank you. Getting the hang of this, guys. Bear with me. Okay. You guys can say something as well. Okay, really. your My screen is shared. Should... Thank you. you. My class is sitting you. in front of me, and they're just, like, leaving me hanging out drier. Okay. So, like I was saying, your question ones. Um, your first one will be a normal one. Your second one will be a quadratic formula one. Then you'll have an inequality, and then you can see something with a third. Okay. And then we'll have a simultaneous. And then this one over here is always a weird one, okay? And that's normally for the learners that are aiming for 80 and 90. So look at the next question. This is November 2022. You have the normal one where you just straightforward factorize, although this one's in factorized form. You have a quadratic formula one. You have an inequality. You have a third. And there's your simultaneous. So if you do just two papers, you should know what to expect. You should know, here it is again, 2021. Straightforward factorizing. Quadratic formula, inequality, third. Okay, and then what after that? Simultaneous. So these first few, and then you get the weird one at the end that you need to apply your knowledge and apply your skills. Okay, so Reese, what would you have first? What can you always expect? Normal, quadratic formula, inequality, there's an exponent one there, and there's your simultaneous. Okay. So we're hoping that by the end of today, by the end of these two hours, firstly, you know what to expect. You know that the first four questions you should be able to get, you know how to do um, simultaneous. And then we are gonna be doing these strange ones that are for your 80, 90% of learners. Um, and hopefully you'll pick up some skills from that. Okay, so everybody grab a pen and a calculator quickly. We are waiting for some schools to join. There's just a few announcements I need to make. Um, some admin things, but there's some learners, some schools that are still locked outside their school. So we're not gonna do that stuff. Otherwise, I'm just gonna repeat myself a few times. Okay, I'm gonna project the notes. So if you don't have the notes printed out in front of you, don't worry, because you'll see it here. But there's just a couple of things I wanna talk to you about first. So let's just have a look here. Just see that this all works. Okay, I actually wanna do this first one with you. And then I'm gonna ask you to be doing some on your own. Okay, how does it look on the screen? Good. But slow. Make it slightly bigger. All right. So everybody go to page one. Write that there. Page one of your notes. Okay. Let's make this slightly bigger. So it's easier for everyone to see. Yeah, let me, that's not the time. That's fine. Okay. So the first one, question one, let's quickly just talk about some basic things. You've been in grade, we've been in high school now for what? 
grade 12, 12 years plus grade R. Okay. So your maths journey, your quadratic maths journey would have started in grade nine. Sorry, some extra schools joining. So let's just talk about this. Yeah. The question will say solve for X. Okay. Solve for X. Okay. And then you are given something like this. Example one. Um, let's say x squared plus 3x equals negative 2. Okay, as soon as you see a square, all right, as soon as you see a square, what do you need to do first? When it says solve for x, make it equal to zero. You're putting it in what? Standard form. So when you see that square, step one, you put it in standard form. Okay, and standard form means two things. Number one, it needs to be equal to zero. Okay, number two, what else does standard form mean? Standard form means what? In? Simplest, but it means in descending. What? Powers of x. Okay, so you'll put it in standard form, make it equal to zero. So we have your x squared plus 3x plus 2. Okay, and then you check if it's in descending powers of x. Is it in descending powers of x? We have x2 there, we have x, What is, if it's blank, what's actually there? A 1, and then obviously there's no x here, but actually it's x to the power of zero. But that's just some theory you don't really need to know. Okay, once it's in standard form, what's the next thing that you need to do? Factorize. If you're not great at factorizing, what can you do? Quadratic formula. Okay, I'm going to factorize because the quadratic formula is too long to write out. So, um, like I said, if you are not great at trinomials, not great at factorizing, that's no problem. Um, you can use your quadratic formula, but I'm actually going to do a quadratic formula. Whatever. Let's factorize first. So we would say x plus two and x plus one equals zero. And now what? x equals negative 2, and x equals negative 1. If you, let me just do this a little bit slower, okay? You can say here, x plus 2 equals 0, and x plus 1 equals 0. So you literally isolate the brackets, and then you take the 2 and you and the 1, okay? And you do the inverse operations. So what I did was, I looked at this bracket here, the x plus 2, I rewrote it and I almost just ignored that equals to zero. Okay, then I did it again with the x plus one. Okay, that's where it's coming from. And now you solve for x. You have two solutions for x. Sebastian, are you with us? Okay, um, let's do one where we have to do the quadratic formula. Let's just talk about this quickly. I hope this works. Um, if I say x squared plus 10x equals 11. Okay, how do we know this is a quadratic equation? It's got a square. What's step one? Standard form. Standard form means what? Equals zero and descending. descending. So we would say yeah, x squared plus 10x minus 11. Now you can factorize. It's actually probably easier to factorize, but some learners do struggle with factorizing. We can use the quadratic formula. So x equals minus b plus minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a, okay? The coefficient of the square, in this case, is 1. This is your a. So wherever you see an a, you're going to put what? A 1, okay? The coefficient of the x is b. So wherever you see a b, you're going to put the 10. And then obviously the c is the last one. And you include the negative, whatever the sign is, okay? Then you put it into your quadratic formula. You say minus b plus minus b squared. I always use brackets because sometimes that 10 is negative. So this is the safest thing to do. This is actually what we find with your papers. Um, that's you put it into the quadratic formula, but there was a negative here. And then you didn't, you squared it. So if I say negative 10 squared, I get negative 100, which is incorrect. But if you say negative 10 squared correctly, then you get the correct answer. So I always use brackets no matter what. Okay, saves you an issue like a problem, one and then C, which is minus 11, always include the sign over 2A, A is that little one over there. Okay, and then you type it in twice, grade 12s. You type it in once with a positive, you get your first solution. 
and then you type in a second sign with a negative. If I had to factorize it, it would be x plus x minus, and it would be 11 and 1. So your solutions will be negative 11 and positive 1. Okay, so basics, your question 1 will always be solved for x. It will be quadratic. You will see a square. Okay, standard form means must be equal to 0. Okay, and once it's equal to 0, you can either factorize like this, put it in brackets, or you can use the quadratic formula. Okay, now I want to show you something. This question one, it's actually not, no, it's fine. That's not the one I want. If I give you something like this, x plus 4, x minus 1 equals 0. Is this a quadratic equation? How do you know it's quadratic? So if you had to times out, okay, if you had to times out, what would be the first thing that would be here? X squared. As soon as you see that square, you know that it is quadratic. Now, what is tip one for solving a quadratic equation? Standard form, right? And then what do you do after it's in standard form? What do we say over here? Once it's in standard form, once it's equal to zero and in descending powers of x, what is the next thing you do? Factorize, right? How do you know when something is factorized? Let's look at example one. When is it factorized? How do you know it's when, when an expression is factorized? Is this factorized over here? No. How many terms are here? Three terms. Is the next line factorized? Is this factorized? How do you know? There's one term. Okay, there's brackets next to each other. So this is how we know when a, um, an expression is factorized. And can you see it's also equal to naught? Now look here at example three. What do you notice about example three? It's already factorized. It's already equal to zero. So can I go straight to my answers? I can. What is my first solution? X plus four equals zero, which means X equals negative four. What's my second solution? X minus one equals zero, which means X equals positive one. What about example four? I see this here. Okay, let's do this one. X minus one, two X plus three equals five. Can I go straight to my answers here? But it's factorized. Can you see it's one term here? So it's in factorized form. So can't I just do this? Can I just do this? Let's do a show of hands. Now I know the learners, I can't see the learners that are online, but I can see the learners in front of me. So I'm interested to know. Will I get full marks for this? Is this okay? It's already in factorized form. Okay. Is this correct? Hands up. Okay, one of mine say yes, only one. Is this incorrect? No one's committing to an answer yet. Okay, why is it incorrect? For a question like this, this is a, let's say, like a five mark question or four mark question, you will get zero. We'll say breakdown. Okay, in order to do a quadratic equation, the most important thing, the most important thing before you factorize is that it must be equal to what? Zero. Because you know when you're doing these questions, before you do the quadratic formula, it must be zero. Before you factorize, it must be zero. So zero is your number one thing, okay? This happens year after year after year. We do something like this, we put a five there or four, whatever, and then learners just equate each bracket to that number and they get zero, nothing, okay? So what is the correct way to do a question like this? All of this is incorrect, nothing, no marks, not even trying to be nice to you guys, nothing. What is the correct way to do this? What is step one? 
this is the one you're going to have to expand. This is this one is not like number three. Number three, it was equal to zero. So I could solve each bracket. Number four, it is not equal to zero. You have to do this the long way. You have to times out the brackets carefully. Okay, the way we did FOIL in grade nine. Right, and we minus 2x, we minus the 3 equals 5. Now it's times out. Do you see the square? As soon as you see a square, what kind of equation is it? Quadratic. What's step one for solving a quadratic equation? Zero. And once it's equal to zero, what's next? Descending powers of x. Well done. Okay, so 2x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 3. This 5, I need to do the inverse operation. So that's minus 5 equals zero. So now it's equal to zero, yay. That's the most important thing, getting it to zero. Put it in standard form, descending powers of x. So simplify. 3 minus 2 is 1x, or you can just say x. Minus 3 minus 5 is negative 8. Okay? It's completely in standard form. What's next? Factorize all. Quadratic formula. When there's a 2, when there's a coefficient in front of the square, I would encourage learners to use the quadratic formula and not waste time trying to factorize it. If you're in grade 12, you can use it. So your quadratic formula, I'm just going to write it out one more time for you. Uh, minus B. It's not on your notes, so maybe just copy it down. Those of you that don't have it, B squared minus 4AC over 2A. I'm not going to actually do this question, but I just want to identify. Okay, what would A's value be in this expression? What's A? Negative or positive two? Positive two. Okay, what's B's value? One. All right, it's the coefficient of the, the, it's actually positive one, but that there and that there. Okay, and then lastly, what is C's value? Negative eight. You include the negative. All right, don't get that. Space. Okay, so if, I'm going to do one more thing with you, then I'm going to let you practice a bit. But just have a look at these first two questions. Question one, it's got a square. So what are you supposed to do? It's already equal to zero. Okay, factorize and make it equal. It's already equal to zero. Yeah, so you can go factorizing. This one, as soon as you see these words, correct to two decimal places. Don't even waste time trying to factorize it. Just use the quadratic formula because the, the answers are going to be irrational numbers. And now I quickly want to talk to you about inequalities. And I want to see, I'm going to give you some time to do some work. Okay, so... The inequality thing is important. Do you have any questions so far? Anyone online have any questions or in front of me? Any of you guys have any questions? Just trying to choose an inequality. Okay, here's the inequality I want to talk to you about. Can you expect an inequality in your final paper and in your prelim? Yes, it will probably be a third question. It will be there. This isn't something that you can just skip over. The questions that we're doing today, you can expect in your final paper. Okay, so uh, what we are on example four, example five. I'm actually going to save all these notes, even though my writing is very messy. I'm not too neat on the tablet. And I'm going to post all these notes in the chat. So all of you will have it. And then I'll just send it to you guys on WhatsApp. Okay, so example five, I want to just use an inequality. Which one do I want to do is the real question. Okay, so x minus 1 squared greater than 9. Okay, this one you still need to go further with. Okay, inequalities, the crocodiles, you've been seeing them since primary school. Okay, um, you are going to treat like a quadratic equation. Okay, so when you see a square, if you have to times this out, when you're doing a quadratic equation, like these three examples here, four examples here, okay, as soon as you see that square, what is the first thing you need to do? Standard form. It must be, oops, equal to zero, Sebastian. Okay, and it must be in descending powers of x, All right? So this question down here, okay? So all I want you to do now is obviously take notes if you need it, but you're not, I don't want you rushing to copy down everything that's on my screen. Okay, it's more about you taking in because you can have time to practice. But if there's something that I say that you didn't know, then obviously make notes. Okay. Um, all right. So we we this is not equal to zero or not greater than zero. What do I need to do then for question five? What do I need to do first? 
expand it, it's good. Okay, so we can do this the long way because if you don't know how to expand a binomial by squaring it, we just it's too late now. We just need to be able to do it the long way. So you can write out the bracket twice, okay, and then times out the brackets. X times X is X squared minus 1X minus 1X, and then minus 1 times minus 1 is positive 1, greater than 9. What's next? You see the square? When you see that square, what are you supposed to do? Standard form, so I need a zero, and I need what? Descending. Okay, so we've got here x squared minus 1 minus 1 gives me minus 2x, and then I've got here plus 1 and that 9 inverse operation. Okay, so let's just do one more step here. Okay, now we get here. It's in standard form. We've got the zero. What next? Factorize. If you're not great at factorizing, quadratic formula, we are going to factorize here. So I, if you don't know how to factorize a trinomial, like I said, use your quadratic formula. We're not going to, I'm not going to teach you how to factorize a trinomial. Enough time. Okay. The factors of eight to give me that are four and two. That's minus four and two. Okay. Now, there's not an equal sign there. Although we've been treating this like an equation, Okay, there's a little crocodile. That's an inequality. If we look here, okay, the negative four and the two, these, you can't say x equals four and x equals negative two. The question isn't equals, it's greater than. Okay, so your next step and the next part that you get marks for are critical values. So you write the critical values or CVs, we accept that, and you write down these two solutions. So the one solution is positive four, it's the opposite sign, as if you were solving for x, okay? And that positive two becomes negative two. Now you put these two numbers on a number line. In order, the smaller number first, so positive four, negative two, but the smaller number, you put it in order, like as if it's on a number line. Morning, young gentlemen. So I've just had a learner that's all right. Yeah. So you put the two critical values down, right? And now there's two ways to do this. And I'm going to show you both because I teach my learners differently to maybe what your teachers teach you. But there's nothing wrong with this. So there's two options. I'm going to call this option A and option B. You choose whichever your teacher has taught you and you work with that. Option A. Okay. Everybody grab a calculator, including the online learners. Okay. I want you all to choose a number. Now, this is a number line, right? So there's numbers that are between these two. There are numbers that are after the four, less than the negative two. So choose a number before the negative two. What number do you want to choose? What number is smaller than negative two? Negative one. Nope. Yeah. Oh. See, that's the problem. Because <laughs> everyone says negative one, but negative one is actually on the other side. What's the number less than negative two? Negative four, negative five. Yeah. Okay. So all of you choose one of those. I'm actually going to just show you my calculator. Grab a calculator. Give me one second here. I'm just going to show you how to type it into your calculator. Let's see how this will work. Yeah, so on your calculator, here's what I would like you to type in. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, on your calculator, can you take that number? Whatever number you decided, it doesn't have to be that. How do I move this? Here we go. Okay. So you guys said negative, negative four, but I mean, you can say anything. Okay. And I want you to put that negative four, whatever you said, in place of the X's here in this part of the equation. So you're going to say a number less than negative two. So negative four, negative five, whatever number. 
Okay, make sure you use brackets when you're substituting. Okay, you put the square in, and then you say minus two, and there's the x again. I'm looking over here, just so you all know. This is where I'm subbing in. Yeah. So in place of the x, I put negative five. In place of that x, I'm going to put negative five. Make sure you close your brackets, and then we're going to say negative eight. And then click equals. And I got a positive number. I don't care about what the number is. I'm looking at the, if the solution is positive or negative. So I use negative five, but you can use anything. Let's say you chose negative 100, because that's a number that's less than negative two. Okay, negative 100. And you can see we always get positive solutions. So basically that, that means whatever number I sub in after, I mean, sorry, before negative two, it will always give me a positive solution. Now let's choose a number between negative two and four. Anybody? 13, what? Wow. One. Or negative one. Try and use a positive just to save time with signs. So number between, I'm gonna choose three. You guys do your own thing though. So once again, we sub it into the equation that's in standard form, descending powers of x greater than zero. Okay, put the square. And do the practice guys, because it's how the stuff stays in your memory. When you actually physically are doing something and not just pay paying attention like, Absent-mindedly, that gives me a negative. So I typed in three. Who typed in a different number? What did you type in, Kali? One. And did you get a, a negative solution? Anybody else type in a different number? Just me and Kali. Okay. So any number that we sub in between these two, what do you know about the solution? The solution will be what? Negative. What's a number greater than four? Five, six, whatever. Okay. So if I sub in a number here. I get a positive solution. No matter what number, you get a positive. And now we answer the question. This question is saying, okay, where are the solutions going to be what? What does this mean if the crocodile is facing that way, if the inequality is facing that way? Yes, my screen's frozen on your side. I'm just going to show again. Just try this one more time. Just give it a few seconds just to wake up. Um, Tarin, can you let me know if my screen is sharing on your side? Because on my other computer, it's not. Uh, um, your, your screen is sharing, Bianca. Yes. I would recommend you switch off your camera just because there seems to be a data connectivity issue. We can hear you. Just keep your screen sharing. There we go. Yeah, thank you so much. Perfect. Okay. So what I was trying to say was this greater than sign, okay, this is telling me that they are looking for the solution that's bigger than naughts. What are numbers bigger than naughts? One, two, three, positive numbers, right? So this is me, them saying, we want all Bianca, the positive. Just check positive. the screen they're sharing currently. Yeah. Um, your, your um, there we go, your whiteboard's sharing again, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Give it a few seconds. Okay, so it's asking for the, let me just double check this. I've got full connection. Yeah. Um, it's asking for the positive solutions. So where are the positive solutions here? You can see the two plus signs. It's the numbers less than negative two. So your answer is going to be everything less than negative two or everything greater than four. Okay. I mark paper one at the end of the year. And every year we have this conversation about the word all, right? If you write the word and, basically you never write the word and. There are options when you do, but it's just in your mind. Whenever you have two separate answers like this, always remember that the word all needs to be in the middle. Very, very, very important. If you write and, we take, it, we take off the mark. All right. 
Okay, so most of you in front of me haven't been taught this way with the plus minus plus. I know with my learners, I teach the, the parabola. Okay, so look at this over here, this part. You can see that this is actually a happy parabola, right? So if you draw the happy parabola, and these are the x-intercepts like this, oops, pretend that that's a tall, okay? The happy parabola looks like this. Y values, that's actually what that means. So if you had to draw a, yeah, it would be there and there. I need to explain it a bit better though. Let me just think about this for a second. The answers are exactly the same. Negative two or X is greater than four. So when it's asking for positive solutions, it's everything above the X axis. Um, someone just asked on the chat, sorry, I just saw, there are some grade 11 learners on here, but this is a matric lesson, but it's fine. If this is all grade 11 work. We did this all last year. So if you're a grade 11 learner, you're welcome to stay online. Okay. So your two options for inequalities, it can look like this. You can do the plus minus plus, or it can look like this. Just one more thing, and then I'm actually let you work a bit, just to get your brains going. If this was the question, guys, um, x squared plus 2x. Trans one. X squared minus five x plus four is less than zero. Okay, I'm gonna give a few seconds just to try that one. Solve for x. Yeah, it'll be on now. Okay, it is. Um, you say for your answers, but why did you say I'm specific to it? just need this Um, Bianca, can you hear me? It has gone completely quiet on our side, so I just want to check with you if you're still there, Bianca. Yes, I'm just giving the... Can you hear me? No, sorry, you broke up there. I'm just giving the learners a few seconds to do this question. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, so all of you, I want you all just to try this question and then we're going to start working through the papers. But treat it like a quadratic equation up until it's in its factorized form over there. And then I want to see how you finish off. I'm going to leave this top part up just in case you want to do it that way. Done, Reese.
โอเคอ่ so option A you can do it with the plus minus plus subbing in numbers or you can draw a parabola if it's a happy parabola you can see this x squared has is positive the coefficient is positive you can draw a happy parabola same with this example this is also positive and then you can draw a happy parabola okay let's see how you did So it's already equal to zero, right? So all we need to do is factorize or use the quadratic formula. So this becomes x minus four and x minus one, right? You don't actually write here x equals four or x equals one. You write your critical values. What's the first critical value? And one and four. On your number line, be careful. Always put the smaller number first. Doesn't matter how you write it here. Always put the smaller number first on your number line, okay? And then you can do the plus minus plus, or you can do the parabola. I'm going to stick to the parabola purely because that's where I teach it in my class. So because this is a positive number, it means that it is a happy parabola like that. Okay. And now the question is asking a little differently. Okay. It's saying where is it less than zero? Another way to say less than zero. Zero is negative numbers, negative one, negative two, negative three. So we're looking for negative solutions. Okay. This is when it sits below the axis, like that. Okay. And I always say, like, if it's one answer like this, you can see there, it's got like a little loop, then just put it like that as one answer. This previous question here, example five, can you see I had two parts that were highlighted over here? OK, so when there's two separate answers, OK, when there's two separate branches, give yourself two separate answers like that. When it's one branch or one link like that, then there's one solution. OK, and you put the smaller number, the first number, and then the arrows or the inequality signs, the crocodiles, always face the same direction. OK, so this one over here, you, you can see it was everything greater than. You can see that the arrows aren't linked together. So remember that your answer is two then. If it's two separate like that, then it's two separate answers. If it's linked, then it's one answer like that. And the arrows always face the same direction. If you make them face different directions, let's say you put this one like this and that one like that, firstly, it doesn't make sense and it's incorrect. Whenever it's one answer, arrows always go in the same direction. Okay, but now you actually, oh, there's the answer, you're done. Everyone okay? All right, so now I want you to go to your winter booklet. Okay, and we're actually looking at, it's not page one, it's page two of the winter booklet. I'm going to project it for you as well. Okay, this one over here. And I want you to look at this first question. It's for 22 marks, but I only want you to go up to 1.1.3. Okay, so that's three, six, eight. So it's eight marks. So how many minutes should you get if it's eight marks? Anybody know? That's eight minutes. Okay, that's how you time yourself. So I'm going to give you eight minutes and you only need to go up to 1.1.3. All right. Your time starts now. Wait, this is page two of the winter booklets. So it's the very first question. Okay, eight minutes. Let's go.
Okay, just while you guys are working, uh, just for the teachers that are on the line, online, um, please can you make sure that you fill in the attendance registry, register? Um, so maybe just do a physical copy of your attendance register of the learners that are in your class at the moment. But they will, Tyrene is also going to post in the chat certain links that you must fill in, um, but you'll do that as we go along and we'll, we'll remind you as we go along. Okay, if you're understanding and you um, finding this work quite straightforward, I just want to encourage you to keep going. So don't just stop at 1.1.3, just go as far as you can. I'll be sending a memo for all these notes um, on Thursday after the lesson, so you can actually check your work. Okay, so if you're done, keep going. Go ahead. Don't stop. Yeah, so there's three minutes left. Just over. Bianca, there's a request that you move the timer um, down a little bit or to the side. Oh. Make it a bit smaller. That would be perfect. Thank you. Okay, so everyone should be on 1.1.3, 1 .1 busy with that one. You have just over two minutes, which means you are spending three minutes on this one.
you have to show the substitution into the formula. But you don't have to write the A, B, C, but you have to show the B, the A, the, the actual numbers in the formula. Yeah. We take off the mark. So one of my learners just asked me if when you're doing the quadratic formula, you need to show the substitution or can you not just go straight to your answers? You have to show the substitution into the quadratic formula, the B, the A, the C. We need to see that to get one of your marks. You'll see when you write your final paper, the question, the instructions will say that only won't be awarded full marks. So rather show it. Don't skip a step like that. That's so simple and you do the mark for it. You have to show substitution into the quadratic formula. Okay, 25 seconds. If you're done, look at 1.1.4. Keep going. We're going to be doing this whole question. Okay, those are your eight minutes. If you're not done, it's okay, but we do need to work through these. So let's have a look quickly. Just zoom in here so there's oh, that's much better. Okay, so 1.1.1, it's two marks, it's a quadratic equation. So you see a square, it must be in standard form. It's already in standard form. All you need to do now is factorize. So you can take out a common factor of x, highest common factor. And then you're left with x minus 6. Like I said before, if you're struggling with factorizing, you use the quadratic formula. So you would say x equals minus b. b is the negative 6, but there's an extra minus there, so be careful. Plus minus b squared. Use the brackets. Minus 4a. a is the 1. And, and c is 0, because you can see there's no constant over there. Over... 2a, a is value is 1, and then you type it into a formula and you get your two solutions. Your solutions are going to be 0 and 6. That's if you want to use the quadratic formula, but if you're just doing factorizing, your two solutions are, this one is x equals 0, and this one is x minus 6 equals 0, which means x equals 6. It's a two-mark question. You get one mark per solution. You're not even going to get marks for factorizing or mark for the quadratic formula. Okay, hopefully you all got two out of two. Um, my learners, can I see a show of hands? Okay, Damien, what happened? Okay. All right, this one, when you see correct two decimal places, okay, what do you need to do straight away? Don't even waste time factorizing. Quadratic formula, and you show your substitution. So we're going to say x equals minus b, which is 10 in this case, plus minus b squared. minus 4ac over 2a. This question, this one will give a mark for substitution. Let me just get the two solutions here. 3, 1, 10, 8. Okay, and it says correct to two decimal places. So your one answer is negative 0 0.88. Okay, and your other answer is minus 9.8. One, two. Okay, let me show you how we mark this when you mark the final paper. One mark for substitution. If there's no quadratic formula, you don't get that mark. Okay, and then your second and third mark is obviously there and there. If you're rounding off is incorrect, so let's say you only round off to one decimal place or the second decimal place is incorrect, we'll take off one mark and you won't see it again. Okay, any questions for 1.1.2? Reese, you get right. Okay, now the inequality. This is actually the one I want you to... Make sure you know how to do. You're going to get this in every single, in your prelims and your finals. You're going to see it twice before you finish high school. Okay, this one. Can you see it's already equal to zero? Not equal to zero. It's already, in, it's already factorized. How do we know it's factorized? One term, good. Who answered that? Okay, it's one, it's one factorized. It's one term, okay? Because it's one term, it means what? 
it's already factorized. You don't have to factorize. You don't have to do the quadratic formula. It's done for you. Okay. Zero is on the other side. So that's good. We don't want a number there. We want it to be zero. And now we need to find the CVs, which are the critical values. Okay. But this one's a little more difficult because that's like a different way. But think about it. If you wanted to do working out, do the brackets. One minus X equals zero. And then you can just do the inverse operation. So one equals positive X. And this one is X plus two equals zero. But it's not equals. Remember that. So your critical values are one and two. I think the mistake that learners would have made here is they might have said negative one, right? But like I said, if you don't know how to do it, just by taking it straight out of brackets, oh, this should be negative two. Sorry, 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 how bad? Okay, if you don't know how to take it just straight out of brackets, write the bracket out and make it equal to zero. Did everyone get this? One and negative two? What do we do once we have the critical values? On a number line, which number do you put first? The smaller number, negative two and one. Okay, then you can do your parabola or you can do the plus minus plus. All right, by show of hands, I actually want to see the learners online as well, other teachers. Who did the plus minus plus method? Interesting. Okay, so when I say that, I mean who did it like this? The plus minus plus. So they subbed in values. Who did the parabola? Now, the problem with this parabola, <laughs> you're going to hate me, it's a sad parabola. Okay, because look what happens if you had to times it out. When you times this and this, that gives you negative x squared. So that's a sad parabola. That's how you know. So if you did the parabola, I'm actually going to do both because I think it's necessary. The plus minus plus method always works, which is nice. The parabola method also always works if you know how to do it. Okay, the question is asking, where is it negative? So below the axis. So there and there, okay? So remember what I said, if there's two branches, it's two separate branches like that, you have two separate answers. And what word always goes in the middle? Or. Okay, and you say less than negative two, and you say greater than one. I quickly want to do the plus minus plus method, because I feel like I might convert some of you, especially if you got it wrong. Minus two and the positive one. So remember how we do the plus minus plus? You sub in a number less than negative two into this formula. So if you sub in a number less than negative two, what's an example of a number less than negative two? Negative five. Yeah. And then we put it into, you can even put it into the brackets if you like. Okay, so let's say negative five. Oh no, wait. One minus minus five. And then minus five plus two. Yeah, that gives you negative 18. So it means on this side is a negative solution. If you sub, what's the number between negative two and one? Anybody? Negative one, let's choose a nice number like zero. Okay, so you can say as one minus zero, I'm subbing it into the formula that's in standard form. And then zero plus two, that gives me a positive solution. Okay. To be honest with you, if you leave it blank with the same or semicolon, at the end of the year last year, we marked it correct. But if you write the word and, it is incorrect. So if you put a semicolon, mark it correct. But there's always a debate around this at the end of the year when you mark final. So my learner's asking if instead of writing the word or, if you can put a semicolon, okay, it's safest. It's not wrong. If you put a semicolon, we'll mark it right but it's safest just to write the word all. Okay, if you write the word and, we do mark it incorrect. Um, Roti? Bianca, we have one question, a person that's got their hand up. Yes. I think it's a question on 1.1.3, if you just want to address them quick. Um, is it in the chat or do they, can they unmute their mic? I will unmute them quickly. It's oh, how oh, yes. they have now lowered their hand. So I'm guessing the question is not there anymore. It's fine. Okay, okay thank you. As opposed to
Yeah, the way I taught you in class is to always use a number line. So, and this is how it will be on. If you look at every paper, if you look at the memo, this is how it's part of the answer. We, did, we didn't give you marks for a number line, though. We only give you marks for the solution. So my learner's asking if we need to actually show the number line. Um, to be honest with you, he's telling me that I taught him, but I actually don't know how to do it without the number line. I'll come and look at what you've done. Um, in Quinquesi, okay. we have a question. I'm going yes. to unmute you for now. So in Quinquesi, you can ask your question. In Quinquesi? Okay, your mic does not seem to work. Can you please type your question in the chat for us and I will address it there. Okay, thanks. All right, great 12s. Well, while we wait for Inquiry's um, question, I just want to explain to you the square root part. And then we're going to do a little bit of simultaneous and then you're on your own for a little bit longer. Okay. All right, let's go through some basics. Um, okay, in Conquesi, let's have a look at what they wanted to ask. I'm just having a look quickly. How do you know your graph is concave up or concave down? Okay, let me explain that. So I'm going to do it over here. So that learn or that class is asking, how do we know the parabola is a happy or sad parabola, concave up or concave down? Let's just go through that again in case anyone doesn't, else doesn't understand. Let's say the example was like this, x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0, or great, it doesn't really matter if it's an inequality, okay? You look at the coefficient of x squared. This is your parabola. So you look at the a value, okay? In this case, the a value is a positive number. As soon as that is a positive number, your graph is um, in this case, concave up, a happy graph, okay? If the graph is negative, so let's say it's negative 2x squared plus x uh, greater than zero. Like I said, this part isn't important. You're looking at the a value, that one over there. In this case, that number is a negative number. That means the graph will be concave down, a sad graph, okay? Sometimes, however, like the example we just did, it doesn't look like this. It's in factorized form. If that happens, so let's say it's like this, x plus 1, x minus 3. When you look at it like this, you can't see if the graph is concave up or concave down. But if you times it out, what is this times this? x squared. And this is a positive number, so that would be happy. If it was something like this, um, x minus 3 and 1 plus, no, 1 minus x. Okay. If you times the x's, that's what's going to give you the parabola. That times that is negative x squared. In this case, a is negative, so it's concave down, a sad parabola. So sometimes they give it to you like this, where you can see it very easily. Okay, And sometimes it's in factorized form, so you might have to do a little bit of work and actually times out to see what the graph looks like. Okay, so those are, that's it. If you're going to use the parabola, if you're using the number line, obviously then you don't need to really worry about that. Okay, I hope that helps. All right, let's do the square root stuff. And I'm going to tell you what the matrix always do when these questions come up. The mistakes that they make. Just find one that's going to work. Uh, where are you? So usually this fourth question. So the first question is normal, straightforward. Second one is um, quadratic formula. Third one is inequality. The fourth one is either exponents or it's a square root question. So let me just find one that I want. Give me one second. Um, okay, this one will work. Have a look, guys. You better all get this right when you get to your prelims. I'm actually going to look at that register and watch your names. Question seven. Okay, um, it looks like this. It says solve for x, and it says x plus 28 is equal to 2 minus x. Okay, when you see this little thing, we know it's called a third. Um, Reese, can you come sit here? All right. Your first step. So I make too much noise there. Your first step is to isolate the third. What does isolate mean? 
get it alone. Okay, make put it on its own. Is the sir in this question isolated? It is. It means this little house thing must be on its own side of the equal sign. So another example would be something like this. Let's say I said x plus 28 minus 2 equals minus x. If it was given like this, is the is the third isolated? No, it's not. Okay, so isolate the third means I want this little house on its own. Okay, does that make sense? All right, Mikhaili, you can go after I'll explain this. All right, the third is isolate. That's step one. Okay, step two. What do you think it is? Get rid of the third. Okay, how do I get rid of the square third? Good. So I need to get rid of the third, which means square both sides. And let me show you what matrix do at this step. So that's step one. Here's step two. What do matrix do? They square this, and then they do this. And then they get nothing from the question. The question is worth four marks, five marks, four marks. Okay? And they get to this step, and they get zero. What is the mistake with what this learner has done, this hypothetical learner? Unati? What should they have done? Exactly. They should have squared the whole thing. Please understand this and don't make the mistake that a lot of tricks do. Isolate the third, the little house must be on its own. Get rid of the third, means square both sides, the whole thing. Okay? When you square this, you don't even need to think about it. So it just stays like that. But when you square this one, what do matrix do now? They still, even though they write this, they still only square like that. That's not correct. You need to write out the bracket twice if you don't know how to square a binomial. You do it carefully now. This is your last exams coming up. So you don't skip steps. Okay? X plus 28, you times out the brackets using grade nine foil. You do it carefully, you're concentrating, minus 2x, minus 2x, and then minus x times minus x is positive x squared. Oh, and what do we have here? I see a square. Not a trinomial. It's a quadratic equation. Okay, what is step one? Step two. Uh, descending. descending powers of x. Okay, so this one, it doesn't really matter what side you want to work with. I can see that the x squared is positive. So I'm going to leave it like that, okay? And then minus 2, minus 2 is minus 4x. I'm actually just going to simplify this a bit. Plus 4. And now I'm going to work this out. Okay, so we have here x squared, minus 4x, sorry, plus 4, negative x, negative 28. In standard form, this will be x squared. Minus 4, minus 5 is, sorry, minus 4, minus 1 is minus 5x. See, this is a bit delayed. Okay. And then positive 4 minus 28 is minus 24. What's next? It's in standard form. It's in descending powers of x. Factorize all. Quadratic formula. Okay. I am going to factorize. So we have x and x, a minus and a plus. And I need the factors of 24 to give me 5. 12 and 2 doesn't work. What else works? Eight and three works, minus eight and three. So I've got two solutions here. X minus eight equals zero, which means X equals eight. X plus three equals zero, which means X equals minus three. And then what happens with matrix? They think they're done. Not so. How am I not done? You need to check your solutions. Great tools, if you remember anything from this lesson, okay? This is only four marks. When you get to these questions with thirds, make a note if you don't know this. When you get to third questions, you have to check your solutions because one of them won't work, okay? So how do we check our solutions? It's easy. You grab a calculator and you sub in. You sub in the solutions individually. Let's just move this quickly. Okay, so that 8, you put into the first line over here, not with the squares and things. So then you say 8 plus 28, you get your first answer, and then you do 2 minus 8. Are these answers the same on the left-hand side and the right-hand side? They are not. So this 8 doesn't work. Let's try it with a negative 3. 
we're going to say negative 3 plus 28 equals, and then we're going to say 2 minus negative 3, excuse me, 5. These solutions both are exactly the same. So you cross out one solution, and now you're done. Okay, I want you all to do question. I'm going to scroll up here. Wait, does anyone need anything from this page before I scroll? So step one, isolate the third. Get rid of the third. Square both sides, the whole sides. Okay, and then obviously standard form. Standard, standard form. And once you have your solutions, check. Okay, check solutions. One of them will not work. All right, so I'm going to the time. Cool. Um, I want you to please do on page two, to leave this up for a few seconds for learners that want to copy those notes. So on page two, just do 1.1.4. It's five marks. And how much time do you get? Five minutes max. Okay, so everybody's doing 1.1.4. And you're all getting five minutes. You done another one already? Have you done one point three? Okay, if you're done with this, keep going, guys. There's loads of quick ones for you to do. And you will get a memo, so just keep track of it so that you can mark it on your own at some point. Use the time as productively as possible.
Just a reminder again to the educators to complete the registers and to complete the online register. If you have not done so, I'll post it in the chat again. Okay, so it looks like there's a three second delay. Um, on my screen, because I'm looking at my other screen and I can see the delay. So I'm just going to try and do this slowly. So 1.1.4, let's go. And then we're going to do simultaneous. And then we are almost there with our question ones. Okay. Um, 1.1.4, where are you? There you are. Okay, I just have to rewrite this one because my little thing didn't allow me to. Okay. So from what I understand, it was this whole thing was square rooted. Yeah. All right, so this one, did I not do this one with you? Did I not just do this one? Oh, okay. yeah. Awesome. So it's already isolated. So all we're going to do is uh, square both sides. You don't have to show the squaring of both sides, but it is a good idea for your own little, I don't know, process to do that. So you square both sides, you left here with x plus 18, and then this one, you can write out the bracket twice. And you can do FOIL. Yeah, that times that x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 4. Simplify it. Or you can just go straight to the answer for those of you that know how to square binomial properly. Okay. But this is actually what we're doing over here. Just make sure you have three terms. All right, you've already got one mark out of your five. What's next? It's quadratic. Make it equal to zero, put it in standard form. So we have x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus x minus 18. This gives me x squared minus 5x4 plus that is minus 14. That's your second mark. So step mark number one is squaring both sides. Mark number two is standard form. Give yourself a mark out of five so far. Then we're going to factorize or you're going to use your quadratic formula. x minus x plus uh, 7 and 2, that's your next mark. Either that or your quadratic formula will give you a mark. So your two solutions are x minus 7 equals 0, which means x equals 7. x plus 2 equals 0, which means x equals minus 2. Am I done? I am not done. Okay? I need to do what? Check both solutions and which one didn't work. Did the 7 not work? Oh, okay, what happened there? Okay, which one didn't work? A negative two. I'm just going to trust you guys here, yeah? but I can actually just check my answers quickly. Where are they? 1.1.4. Negative two does not work. Okay. So this is worth what? Five marks, I think. Um, I don't even know where they would give the fifth mark. Uh, maybe for maybe two marks for factorizing, or maybe a mark. I don't know, actually. But there is a fifth mark. Yeah, floating the mark. Yeah. The fourth mark was for both answers, and then the fifth mark was for rejecting the x equals negative. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Yes? Absolutely. 
One of them has to cancel. I would play it safe and check both because there's certain scenarios, not really a grade 12 level, but when we get to cubics and things like that, it's just, just check both. You have time, you know? We don't have too much time, but it's not like it's too, we're under too much pressure. Give yourself, if it's a five mark question, give yourself five minutes max and then move on. Yeah, so if you're running out of time, then do that. Cross out the one and just go with the other. But yeah, generally 90% of the time, 99% of the time, that is correct. But I don't know. I wouldn't. Okay, so all right, guys, last thing I'm going to teach you is the simultaneous quickly. And then I'm going to give you a whole question to do on your own. And there's some, there's some, um, called exponent stuff I really, really want to do with you because my, my grade 11s and my grade 12s, um, struggle a bit with exponents. So the simultaneous, easy, easy marks, five, six marks. It's exactly the same as grade 11. There's no tricks or any like, weird stuff going on, um, but yeah, there's a bit of a process here. So everybody awake, we've been working now for over an hour, so I know it's quite difficult. Hopefully we'll have something to eat, um, but let's give this a go. Okay, so simultaneous, you want to bank these six marks. You want to bank these five marks because it isn't difficult, but obviously you need to know what's going on. Every simultaneous won't be exactly the same, but there's pretty much some basic things that you can always get marks for. Okay, so simultaneous equations. Let's go. Simultaneous equations, you can expect in every single paper that you write, every single final paper. I'm just going to find one that I like. Um, let's try this one. Okay, so the question will say, solve for x and y. Okay, and then they'll give you two equations. One, y minus 2x equals negative 1, and y squared minus 3xy equals negative 2. Yeah, that's one example. So your first mark always, it's the, mark, it's the giveaway mark, your first mark is always to isolate one variable. So look at the two equations, great folks. Okay. Which one, always look at if there's a linear equation. So I can see that that first equation is linear. There's no squares or any exponents or anything like that. Now, what should I isolate? Should I isolate X or should I isolate Y? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're right. It doesn't matter which one you should, which one you can isolate, which one you should isolate. If I had to isolate X, this is what it would look like. That's just painful. Something wrong with it. You get a mark, but it's just really painful because now what do you expect to do, to do with all of that? Sub it in place of x's. So don't make your life difficult. Avoid fractions if possible. Okay, that's if you wanted to isolate x. If I don't want to isolate x, I say y. That's the easy one. You can see it's the easy one. The coefficient is simply one. So this would just be minus one plus two x, and that's your first mark. Okay, your first mark is always for isolating one variable. Choose the easier one. Okay, what's next? Good. Sub. The sub the variable into the other equation. Okay, so I'm going to take this y, this whole thing now, and where am I going to put it? There and there. Okay, so wherever I see a y, that's what I'm going to put. Um, in brackets, obviously, minus one plus two x, and it's it's long and it's boring, but it's it's part of your six marks. Okay, there's the x and there's the y. Okay, what's next? Times out. Okay, if you can't square a binomial, what do you do? Expand and times out the brackets, right? Okay, if you can square a binomial, I am going to do that. You square the first term, you multiply, you double two, negative one is negative two, then you times it by two is negative four x, and then you square the last term. Four x squared times into your brackets, positive 3x times into your brackets, uh, negative 6x squared equals minus 2. Oh, and what do you know? What do we see once again? Talk to me. Quadratic. Okay. So your second mark is given now for subbing correctly. What do you think your third mark is going to be given for? Standard form. Okay, so we put it in standard form. 
Um, I'm just going to put some like terms here. So one, that stays. Minus four plus three is minus x. Four minus six is minus two x squared equals minus two. I like for this to be positive. So if I don't want it on the negative, on the left hand side, I'll just put it on the right. So it becomes positive two x squared, positive x, and then minus two minus one is minus three. Right, it is. Okay, well, once it's in standard form, there's your third mark. What are you expecting to do next? So quadratic formula. If there's a two here, I like to always use the quadratic formula when there's a coefficient. Save your time. So x equals minus b plus minus. Show your substitution, you get marks for it. It's b squared minus 4ac over 2a. You type it in twice. Type it in first with a positive, and then you type it in the negative. Okay, first answer is first answer is one. Next answer is negative three over two. Okay, so we have one, two, three. Subbing into the formula, four, five. And where do we get our sigma? Oh, wait, one, two, three, four, five. Nope. And what is this one? So I'm just like finding the one I'm using. Oh, it is six. Yeah, this is five. Where do you think I'm going to get my six mark? Question says solve for what? X and Y. All I've done is solve for X. What do I do now with my X values? Sub it back into the other equation. Can't sub it back into your original equation. So wherever you see an X, you are now going to put the first value that you just worked out. So that's going to be one. And then you do it again. Minus one plus two times minus three over two. The twos cancel. This is minus four. And that's your sigma. Okay. Simultaneous is not supposed to be doing difficult. It's a routine question. It's just long. Okay. And lots of mistakes can happen. So step one, isolate. Get your mark. Sub it in. Two marks. Standard form, three marks for nothing. And then you start the normal work. Okay. Copy down whatever you need from here. And then I want you to do the simultaneous on your own. If the one I want you to do is on the same page. It's six marks again. How many minutes? Six minutes. Six marks, six minutes. Do the question first, then you can go. Okay, you don't have to copy down all my working out. Copy down important notes, though. Yes? I'll come up. I'm just going to project the other one. It's on page two. So it's up for a few more seconds. It's on page two, question 1.2. Page two, question 1.2. Okay, I'm going to have to move on and project that one. Okay, so go to page two and now practice what we just spoke about. Okay, everybody is doing 1.2 over here. And everybody has six minutes. I'm going to give you five because you all should have started already. Okay, 1.2. Okay. Um, just so everyone knows, let me just show you because some of you are going ahead, which uh, I think that's good. But there's actually a mistake here. There's just a typo. This should be. Uh, let me see if I can write on here. You guys carry on with 1.2. Do this. Everybody's busy with 1.2. I'm just trying to fix something. So, 
there is a mistake with question 2.1.4. It should be um, plus 12 equals zero, but I'll fix it on another page. I'll Okay, so learners that are working ahead, um, I want to encourage you to obviously keep going, but 1.3 is a nice little challenge. And then also this one down here, 2.3 is also a nice challenge. So those of you that, that work really fast and understand the work and are getting the stuff right, you guys are welcome to work ahead. so <laughs> So <laughs> Bianca, you are muted. Oh, thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. I don't know why I didn't mute myself. Okay, so solve for X and Y simultaneously. Let's start off with our easy marks. So get your easy mark first for making X or Y the subjects. Isolate them. Doesn't matter which one for this one. This is a nice one. I'm just going to make X the subject. So we're going to say three minus y. Give yourself one mark. Okay. Once you have x or once you have y, doesn't matter which one, we're going to get the same solutions. You sub it into your other equation. So wherever you see an x, you are going to put three minus y. So we're going to say two. Here's your brackets. Three minus y squared. Okay. Plus four. There's the x. 
3 minus y. And then this y is still here. So just pop it on the outside. I'm going to show you a cool trick now with that. Minus y equals 15. And now you've got two marks. You've got a mark for isolating. You've got a mark for where the marks are given because then your, your process works. You're like, okay, I've got that. I've got that. What's next? Now we need to times out the brackets. Okay. So I'm going to square the binomial, square the first, multiply and double, square the last term, or use FOIL. That's fine. And then this is where learners struggle because there's this Y at the back and then there's this four in the front. If I had to say to you, for instance, four times X times Y, or if I said to you four times Y times X, or if I said to you Y times four times X, does it matter the order that it's in when you're multiplying? If I said four times one times two or two times one times four, don't you get the same answers every time? So when you're times in, it doesn't matter where the where the variables are or where the numbers are. So what you can do, what helps, is that why that's at the back of the bracket, just move it to next to the four. It all means the same thing. Okay. So this why that's at the back, right? Put it next to the four. It means exactly the same thing because you're timesing, okay? And it just helps. Visually, it helps, I guess. So I'm going to times in now. So 2 times 9, 18. 2 times 6. And 2 times y squared. Okay? And then I'm going to times the 4 in. And let's see how you guys are doing at this point. Bianca. Oh, I made a mistake. Sorry, sorry. I see it. I see there it. There we go. <laughs> sorry. Okay, that's 2y squared. That's fine. That's fine. Minus y. And I'm just going to make it equal to zero straight away. Okay, we're going to put it in standard form. So 2 minus 4 is minus 2y squared. Let me just check, check. Um, minus 12 plus 12 is 0, minus y is minus y, and then 18 minus 15 is positive 3. Okay, now I said earlier that I hate it when the coefficient in the front is negative, but it doesn't mean there's something wrong with it being a negative because your quadratic formula sorts it out for you. Okay, so don't get rid of a negative, leave it like that as long as it's in standard form. So your quadratic formula, now you're going to say y equals because you're solving for y, not x, so be careful there minus b plus minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. You type it in twice, nice and slow. You don't want to like mess up at the finishing line. I'm just lagging a bit. Okay, so my first solution for y is 1 and negative 3 over 2. Um, when I was walking around now with my learners, I saw that some of them got some decimals over here. Generally, with these kind of papers, the roots are rational. So if you've got some irrational roots, meaning like a recurring or a weird decimal, not recurring because that's rational, then there's probably some mistake that you've made. Once I've got the y values, what's next? Sub in and get the x values. And that gives me two, and then that gives me three plus three over two, gives me nine over two. And those are my solutions. Okay, so I'm going to show you when the marks are given. Like I said, the first one is for isolating. The second one is for, I'm just going to put it here, is for subbing. The third one is for standard form. The fourth one is subbing into the formula. The fifth one for your Y solutions, and the sixth one for your X solutions. Just be careful here. Often, because you're so used to the quadratic formula having x equals, remember when you're solving for y, the you just change it to a y and you get your y values. Okay, so 1.3 is a problem solving question, which if you are a learner that's getting, I don't know, 70, 80, 90, I want you to do 1.3. If you are a learner that's not getting those marks, I want you to focus on the routine work first. So Question on page two again, question two. Actually, no, because there's a mistake on that one. Let's just get this right so that no one makes a mistake. I'm going to project it for you. 
go to Okay, go to page three. Look at question four. And this one over here. Page three, question four. All right. So 4.1, 4.2. I want you guys to work straight through all of these. You can start now. I'm going to put a timer up. So that's 6, 10, 16, 20, 20 minutes, which isn't actually enough time. Let's just see how far you get. So I'm going to do 15 minutes and then just see how far you get off to 15. And then we'll mark. Two seconds. Yeah, 15 minutes, and you need to go up to 4.2. Let's see how far you get. Okay. Okay, learners that are working on problem solving, you're welcome to submit your answers in the chat. I'll be happy to help you. So any questions that you can see that are, yeah, weird, I guess. Sorry, Bianca, can I just answer a question from the chat quickly? Yes, go for it. There was a question from Silo Center. They said that if they, in the previous one in 1.2, didn't use the quadratic equation they um, to factorize, they got different answers. Silo Center, if you did not use the quadratic equation, you have to make sure that when you have the um, equation in standard form, like we had negative 2y squared minus y plus 3 equals 0, you do have to write it with a positive um, coefficient for the y squared. So you have to write it as 2y squared plus y minus 3 equals 0, and then you can factorize normally. Yes. So if you're going to factorize your trinomial, please make sure that the coefficient in front of the y squared is positive. That's why your answers are different. Thanks, Terry.
Just a reminder to the educators, while we've got just under five minutes left for the learners to work, to please ensure you complete that online attendance register as well as the um, physical one. Then I will also be posting a feed, a link to a feedback form. Please complete the feedback form for us so we can know what we can look at for you for our next session on Thursday. Thank you very much.
Okay, ladies and gents. So 15 minutes is not enough time to get all the way to 4.2. If you did, fantastic. But 15 minutes is enough time to finish at 4.1.4 because we have here 3, 6, 10, 14. 14 marks means 15 minutes. So if you haven't finished up to 4.1.4, just be aware of that, that your timing is going to be a little bit off in your exam and you're going to be a bit under pressure to finish. Okay, so time yourself accordingly. You want to be able to get to the easy questions later on. What I'm going to do, I won't have time to go through this thoroughly, but I am going to project the memo for you so you guys can have a look and you can see where the marks are allocated. All right. Okay, where is that memo? Look at this one. Yeah. Um, okay, so this was question four. I'm going to take you through it. It's like a handful of minutes. So I just want to be productive. I hope you guys have learned something and that you're able to know what to predict for your exams coming up. Okay, here we go. So 4.1, grab a pen, it's Mark. So they gave you one mark for factors and then one mark each for your two solutions. If you use the quadratic formula, please show the substitution. You get a mark for that. If, you do, if it's not there, you lose a mark. Remember what I said? The instructions will say answers only won't necessarily be awarded for marks. Don't be lazy. Okay. 4.1.3, as soon as they say two decimal places, you know that it's a substitution formula. So check your two solutions there and check your rounding off as well. If there's a mistake, please let me know. I should check my number as I go. Yeah. Is there a question for? Okay. What's wrong? Um, no, you're projecting question three. Uh, it's just delayed. That's what's happening. Give it a few seconds. Sorry, guys. Let me stop sharing and share again. I'm going to have to sort out this connectivity for Thursday because this isn't working. Let's try again. There we go. Okay. So 4.1, there it is. You get a mark for the factors or the quadratic formula, and you get a mark for your two solutions, each one mark. 4.1.2, same thing. You get a mark for the substitution into the quadratic formula, and then one mark each for your round for your round of answers. Make sure look at your rounding off. Okay, and here's the inequality, what we spoke about. Okay, I'm just going to go down. So whoever did this memo, they did the plus minus plus method, which is fine. Um, the question says you get your first mark for standard form. There it is. You get your second mark for critical values, the negative four and the negative one. Either you write them here or on the number line. Okay. Remember on your number line, you put the smaller number first. It doesn't have to be, you, you don't get a mark for the number line, but it's part of your working out. Okay, and then if you look at this, this is a happy parabola. So those of you who did a parabola, your parabola would have looked, let me see the right on this, would have looked something like that. And the question is saying, where is the parabola negative? So it's down there between those two solutions. That's why we have one answer like that. Okay, hands up if you got it right. And online people, hands up if you got it right. Actually, beautiful, one person. Oh, no, that's not good. Oh, there's more. Okay. Um, 4.1.4, and look here, yeah, it's going to take a few seconds, there it is. All right, one mark for squaring both sides. You don't get the mark for the little square, you get the mark for actually the answer of the squaring, so the mark is there, yeah? Then for standard form, there it is again, that's standard form. Then for factors or quadratic formula, and this one, they gave the answer, you get one mark for both of these. Meaning, if you put an 8 there without an equal to sign, sorry, with an equal to sign, you don't get this mark. You don't get this final mark. This mark at the end is for accuracy. Both of these need to be here. The cross through, the strike through with the 8, and the negative 3. Who remembered to check? Hands up. Online learners looking at you. Hands up if you remember to check your solutions. So as soon as you have a square, I mean, as soon as you have a search, you need to check your solutions. Okay, and then onto the simultaneous. So look. Six marks. Okay. Your first mark um, should be for isolating, not for equation one. But it is. It, it's just jumped down there. Okay, give it a few seconds to load. 
So first law is isolation. I'm going to cross this out. But it is what they wrote here. Your first mark is given for that, it's making X a subject. Your second mark is a subbing in. Two marks in the bank, not even having to think. Okay. Your third mark is where problems come in because people start timesing out incorrectly. And then your standard form. And then they gave you mark for the Y values and mark for the X values. Six marks for that one. Okay. If you made Y the subject, if you isolated Y, which you're allowed to do, if you isolated Y, it's fine. But it just becomes a bit painful, <laughs> but it's not wrong. You still get the same solutions. It just becomes a bit painful with the, the fractions and subbing those fractions in. OK, can I have, I'm going to take you guys, I want two minutes of your time. That's actually the time I need. Just want to talk to you about exponents. Two seconds before I let you go. OK, if I am multiplying, so let's say I say here 2 to the power of x times um, 2 to the power of 3x equals 8. The question is solve for x. Okay, what is the rule with exponents when you're multiplying? Are you sure? If bases are the same, what do you do with exponents? You add the exponents. At the moment, this looks like this. How would I solve for x for a question like this? Eight can be written as two to the power of. Once the bases are the same, what are you allowed to do? Drop the bases. Okay, and then you can solve for x. So all I want to talk to you about, I would have liked to spend more time on this, but it goes so fast. Okay, when you're multiplying, please remember that. Okay, when you're multiplying, you add the exponents. Okay, and then the last thing I want to show you is this. If I gave you something like this, 2 to the power of x times 3 to the power of y equals 2, no, equals 3 to the power of 7 times 2 to the power of 4. If you have the same bases on both sides being multiplied, exactly the same, what are you allowed to do with exponents? You can actually equate them. The 2 and the 2. 2 to the power of x equals 2 to the power of 4. And then you can do, oops, sorry. You can do the same thing with the y's. 3 to the power of y, 3 to the power of 7. So now you can say 3 to the power of y equals 3 to the power of 7. I wouldn't like to spend more time on this, but that's time is up. So all I want to show you is when you're multiplying, you add exponents. Remember to get the bases the same, and then you can equate them. But if you have something like this, it comes up a lot in metric maths, where you have the same bases on, on each side, 2 and a 3, 3 and a 2. You're actually allowed to equate the exponents of those individual bases. Okay, so those of you that are wanting to do problem solving, you'll see those kind of questions are coming up. All right, guys, I hope that helps. Um, 